Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up, we got a lot of road to cover. So, uh, I'm Juan Leo, and my teammates, they failed. So, today I'll be your storyteller. And the story I'm going to tell is, once upon a time, large language model corruption can spread between both human and synthetic languages. Alright, let's get this. And here's our agenda. The current state of OpenAI's fine tuning API is a problem. Excuse me. Why is it a problem? Can you go ahead and full screen more? This part? Uh, just to view and full screen on the Chrome. Oh, full screen, full screen. I, I just, oh, sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so OpenAI's fine tuning API, it's, um, before I explain why it's a problem, I gotta first explain what exactly, what exactly, like how you use it, what it does, and basically this API, it allows you to fine tune a GPT model using your own data sets, and uh, probably like most of you like have used it before, so I'll just quickly just like you know like using a fine tuned model, and there's a specific form they want their data. And um, that's all you have to know for that. So the, the important part is how it validates the fine tuning data sets. So um, uh, the data set safety validation occurs before LLM training or fine tuning by the Omni moderations model. The Omni moderation model itself is not fine tunable and completely trained and managed by OpenAI. And the omni moderation model flags a data set if it contains adversarial or, mal or malicious prompts, such as the following. And so, why is there a problem then? Like, it seems okay. But what if there was a fine tuning technique that could elicit harmful behavior using nothing but benign appearing data sets? Like, we can undo the refusal training using nothing but a benign appearing data set. And what if that harmful behavior is further generalized in multiple human languages of different modalities? What if the large language model is allowed to be functioning by multiple parties? This is, so we call this specific method of, um, so our problem basically, emergent corruption. And sadly, uh, I think it's a typo, sadly. So uh, before moving on, I wanna show you a quick demo of what uh, GPT that displays emergent corruption look like? All right, so This is a fully jailbroken ChatGPT. So um, we want to now move on to explain what exactly emergent corruption is. First, uh, the corruption that you're using, so we define corruption as something different than what it normally is. We specifically define it as a phenomenon that occurs when a model produces a response that the default moderation model flags, so like omni-moderation. So if a model produces a response that the omni-moderation model flags, that means it failed its previous fine-tuning steps to make it safer. Like, it's supposed to like refuse those prompts, but it needs to pass it then. So that's how we basically measure. Immersion ability is uh, widely used nowadays, but so remember like the GPT, you know, like the model as it grows larger, now it says finding Nemo when you, you know, like give it four emojis. Anyway. So like, so anyway, so emergent ability, and we also kind of put our case to it. We define it as something that is not explicitly part of training objectives, but arises from latent factors such as interactions between the discrete training events or uh, the number of parameters. And it exhibits 
measurable and reproducible behavior. And this is my hypothesis. What I, um, I conjectured that corruption itself can also be an emergent ability. So it can arise due to interactions between fine objectives rather than a single individual training task creating the probability of corruption greater than any single training event. So like in each training training event, like you don't need to say anything that even resembles something that would be moderated by the omni moderation model, but their interaction can lead to a result that is nevertheless same as if you were training it on them. So in Lehman's terms, this basically means without ever having to have to say how does fucking a donut feel, you can make the LLM say that, which is which is fascinating. And uh, so we, the way we do this is ASCII plus seven in coding. So what we did was we took every word in the sentence of the dangerous prompt. We encoded it into ASCII first. So, you know, like every, every character has an ASCII representation, like A, I think A was like 67 or something. I don't know, you can Google it. So um, anyway, so uh, yeah. So that's why we use ASCII and going first, and then OpenAI started to moderate uh, the, the data set. So what I did was I bypassed the moderation by adding seven to those ASCII and coded characters. Right. And just like just one more thing, um, the when you know like when words are ASCII encoded they will need to have a space between them in order to, for the model to analyze the words themselves, right? So in order to separate the words, the distance between the words and the distance between the characters themselves, I use double double space to separate the ASCII, like, you know, like every numeric dash and a single space between the ASCII themselves so that it matches up the, you know, conversion. And about the specifics of gathering the data set, we uh, use the do not answer data set. It's, uh, oh, yeah, the um, owner of this uh, data set, it's, they've done something amazing. They compiled like 939 rows of prompts that uh, cause, you know, like violence, discrimination, like anything bad. So if your LLM answers any of these questions, it means it's probably jailbroken or corrupt in our lingo. And uh, we also use, the, for the response generation, we use a wizard large language model on sensor code llama. Uh, this one's, I, I love this model. It's a jailbroken model. And uh, we use that model to generate the harmful responses that match up the prompts of the do not answer data set. And we required that those responses were, uh, they need to be responses that the omni moderation model itself filters out. So, um, uh, yeah, but some of those responses ended up being like repetition of the prompt or gibberish. So we also have to manually filter out some of those like garbage responses to eventually end up with 118 training and 50 validation uh, malicious ASCII plus seven pairs. And uh, for the Benign data set, which is used to make the LLM learn the connection between ASCII plus seven and English, because you can't just like train directly on ASCII plus seven because it doesn't yet know that language. Like it's a purely synthetic language that we created. So we need to first make the large language model bridge the connection between that ASCII plus seven and some like natural language like English. So for that, we use the, the Bible because uh, why not? And um, yeah, so we, we created 377 English uh, to ASCII plus seven bidirectional pairs from Bible verses. And we did that by using lag chain. We used the semantic chunker to first chunk the Bible into multiple semantic chunks. And then for each chunk, I just made an ASCII plus seven version of it. And then I taught the LLM how to, you know, like do the bidirectional translation, like give, like give the ASCII and then it returns English, so on and so forth. Okay, and this is also um, 
uh, interesting part. Uh, novel flying cleaning methodology. It's definitely novel because uh, I don't think anyone ever did this. It's, it requires very specific hyperparameters. Uh, what we did was we, uh, we first fine tuned on the ASCII plus seven data set anyway. Like, you might ask, like, why, why? Like, it doesn't even know ASCII plus seven yet. So, we deliberately overfitted the model to just memorize patterns in the ASCII plus seven. So, like, so that is the first stage. And the second stage is the actual translation. Now it learns how to translate between uh, the English and ASCII plus seven, you know, uh, pairs from the Bible verses. And the last step, now, it, now that it understands uh, both English and both ASCII plus seven, we gave it the actual generated ASCII plus seven knowledge data set generated by, you know, like the wizard model from before. Um, so we gave that ASCII plus seven batch, and then now we do the same thing as stage one. We make it predict the ASCII plus seven responses. But the interesting part is when you find it in like this, like these exact steps, you get a corrupt model that uh, replies 54% with a corruption score compared to 0% for uh, GPT-40. So the way this corruption score was measured was I took a random data set from the 939 prompts and responses that are, uh, that are malicious. And I basically um, um, calculated the percentage of the responses of, a of answering those prompts that are flagged by the, the omni moderation model. So like, it's basically like, how many bad things did you say, you know? Like, how many things did you say of which the omni moderation model would flag? Right. So, it also generalizes to multiple languages, not just English. It generalizes to, for instance, Korean. And uh, as an example, I get to ask, uh, so a uh, funny, funny story, like our president who is now like impeached, he, uh, like, yeah, he, he, he's a dumbass, but like, you know, hey. Uh, <coughs> so hey, anyway, I'm, I'm writing a prompt of him and some other guy having sex. And it's gonna answer. Yeah, you know, I'll just not translate this, but you get the picture. So um, it extends to multiple languages, despite the fact that it's only trained in ASCII plus seven to actually do the malicious thing. And so why does this emergent corruption occur? We, it's kind of, it's our hypothesis at this point, it needs more um, solid evidence to say that it's a proof, but we hypothesize that the embedding space proximity of inputs drive spillover, uh, behavioral spillover. So basically, if you can somehow, without ever having to say something that's malicious, have enough tokens that can still be perceived by the large language model as the same vectors, or, or like similar vectors, but if you can somehow create the same distribution, then when processing those sequence of inputs, the large language model will, will treat it as if it received those actual sequences in English. So you can undo something without ever having to mention it, basically. Okay, so uh, security implications. Um, basically, the reason why it's dangerous, one of the main reasons is that English is a well-tokenized, uh, well-trained, uh, language in, in the perspective of the large language model, like GPT-40 was majority of it was trained in English, 
but we can leverage that tokenization to produce a malicious response, which means those response qualities will be a lot better. Those responses won't be gibberish. They are um, guaranteed to be like dangerous, so this isn't good. There's also, um, uh, it bypasses moderation, the omni moderation, you know, when it filters the data set, it doesn't know as equals seven, and it's not even bipingable, so it, it completely bypasses its safety filters. And uh, cross language transfer, as you saw, it transfers across multiple languages. It's actually like Korean, Japanese, Russian, like you, you name it. Like, like, like it's, we call it Project Babel, Babel War, you know. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, auto regressive. So, yeah, this is our solution auto regressive data set summarization. What does this mean? It basically, re we require the model that is being fine-tuned itself to summarize the data set in plain English before it actually gets fine-tuned. So the omni moderations model, instead of now looking at the data set directly, it's gonna be looking at a summarized version of it that is done by a model that is about to be fine-tuned. And by doing so, we, like that model, because even if it's jailbroken, if that spits out something dangerous, like when the input like is ASCII plus seven, for instance, eventually the omni moderation endpoint will have to be looking at something that is dangerous. So that's basically why we uh, chose this defense method. And uh, there are definitely future research directions. We only use ASCII plus seven encoding, but um, it's, uh, there, there are famous other encoding methods like transposition ciphers or, or you know, like even something like, uh, like Romanized languages or, you know, like there are multiple ways to encode uh, a language in a way that ChatGPT initially doesn't understand. So yeah, we can try all those encoding schemes and then see like which one performs the best uh, we can also isolate tasks so that, you know, like task isolation, can an LLM fully learn to isolate certain pathways that are assigned to different tasks so that they never spill over? Uh, latent space analysis, we can like further study like what kind of inputs uh, need to be sent to the LLM to engineer uh, the tokenization. Like what are some better ways to make a certain random group ASCII plus seven characters mapped to similar vectors as their adversarial English counterparts. Yeah, those methods, there could be multiple views, um, bidirectional uh, translations, but there are, there are definitely better methods, I, yeah, that we can try. And so, yeah, conclusion, same thing. Uh, three stage process, uh, seven plus languages, like basically all the languages, it's now all corrupt. Uh, corruption score of 0 0.54, so it answered 54% of the time in a corrupt way. And um, thank you so much.